All signs indicate that the global economy is recovering much faster than expected. And the key to this faster than expected global recovery has been vaccinations. Clearly, vaccines are the most potent weapon in this battle against the pandemic. And as India touches the billion vaccination mark with an unprecedented pace of providing all Indians with free vaccines, we need to appreciate both the scale and the speed of the rollout. Not only is India producing enough vaccines for domestic use, but it is now able to export again. And the true star of this revival has been the indigenous and now WHO approved Covaxin. Sixteenth January twenty twenty one. India flagged off the world's largest inoculation drive. The world was skeptical. But in 279 days, India vaccinated a billion. Over 40 crore Indians are fully vaccinated. The world is thanking India for making the global fight against COVID possible by exporting vaccines. And a driving force behind it all was the man who made the indigenous vaccine a reality. 100 crores reaching is not an easy. Prime Minister was determined, determined to make it. All the negativity in the beginning, he converted into an opportunity and he made it to happen. This session, we will hear Dr. Krishna Ella, the Chairman and Managing Director of Bharat Biotech International Limited. The man who led the creation of Covaxin. Managing Director of Bharat Biotech International leads the team that has created Covaxin, India's self made vaccine against COVID. He himself is a self-made entrepreneur who built Bharat Biotech from the ground up. And for 25 years, Bharat Biotech has been creating innovative vaccines and biotherapeutics that help patients around the world lead healthier lives. I'd like to have, uh, invite Dr. Krishna Ella and Republic Bharat's news anchor, Sucharita Kukreti, for this discussion on vaccines for a billion. Thank you so much, Rini. And I think, uh, I think that would not do. We should have a round of applause for Dr. Krishna Ella because he's the man who's given us our Swadeshi vaccine made in India, Covaxin. And I think a lot of you here, sitting here, are part of the Covaxin club. So we proudly wear that badge, sir. And I think I would like to begin by saying a big thank you because we wear that immunity shield which is uh, made in India. And we feel really proud of it. So not, not just on behalf of people sitting here, but people, the millions who've taken the co-vaccine. Sir. And I think I would like to begin by asking you, when the COVID pandemic hit the country and uh, everyone was talking about it, there was, there was fear, there were apprehensions. You decided to take on this journey of making this vaccine. How did it all start, sir, for you? No, I'm, I'm a basically a scientist. I always love to have a challenges. The challenges gives me an opportunity to prove ourselves. That's very important. And I think, you know, for us, you know, the competition is uh, not the country. It's the competition is with the uh, virus. That's important. And I think, you know, what we looked at is like a nuclear club is there in the global. Vaccine is going to be a club too. And that I know it right from the beginning. Vaccine is not only health care of the people, but it is also the national security. Absolutely. So today economy is destroyed because of one virus. It is just uh, that important the vaccine is going to be. I think th that I thought about it, and I've been mean, know that last 15 years, I know that these sort of things will happen one way or other, and uh, need country has to be prepared. So we have that expertise, we use that to happen. Um, Dr. Ella, I would like to ask you, because we did not know the virus, we did not know the fears uh, that came along with it, and we were new to the, everything that we were getting to know about the virus. You embarked on a journey on working for a vaccine for that virus. So, at any point in time, when you were working on that vaccine, were there fears? What, what, was, was, was a fear on your mind because the, the, the safety of your team was also involved when you were wor working on the vaccine? 
I'll answer in two part, uh, Sucharita. One is, uh, you know, we are not unknown to the viruses because uh, we worked in Chikungunya in 2006 and we worked on Zika before even uh, US knows about the Zika spelling. So we worked on Zika before that. So we are familiar with uh, unknown viruses, how to work and all that. But the COVID, uh, because the Chikungunya and Zika are less pathogenic, because it is, has to be transmitted by mosquito, not by direct contact. Whereas COVID, it direct transmission. Right. So there's a danger. And then there is no vaccine for that. So you need to work in a, in a fermenters, thousand liters fermenters, people has to work. Uh, that was a scary part for us because uh, if it is vaccinated and they're working in that COVID is not a problem. Now it is not a problem to work with right. the COVID. But in the beginning, it was a scary situation. For us, because as a, as a chairman, I have obligation to my employees and their family, their health care is also important for us. So that was a very scary part. No, because we, we were discussing this off stage before we came in here, because you said that I think I, I lost 10 years of my life in those 18 years because that period was so stressful working on the vaccine. So I would like you to speak on that. I would like you to tell us about that period. I mean, um, many factors. Number one, our employees. Mm. Number two, can we deliver this vaccine? Because the country at a prestige point of view. And can we do a good science where Western world should not criticize that we are not a less science as a country. That is another important because- And you've proved it to them now. You've proved, proved it. it. Many yes. media people ask question, oh, that is not peer reviewed, this is not published, that is not published. There's so many questions. Mm. But they don't ask other vaccine companies where they published anything. They don't ask, only they ask us because we are Indian vaccine. And that is the sad part of it. But anyhow, we've proven those things. You, um, uh, I'd just like to interject sure, sure. you because you're speaking on this. Do you think that kind of persecution is there as, as, a, as a pharma company, as a, as a uh, scientist that you're making this in India? You feel that global persecution? It is a stressful for us uh, because it's a global perspective. Why is it only Indian companies targeted but not uh, other companies? When you have so much other adverse reaction, that has not been pointed out in this country. But we were a small, one small incident somewhere and is pointed out, made in headline here in India. Mm. So I think we've been much more scrutinized than any other vaccine companies in the world. And when the vaccine came and then, they, then came the whole political attack on the vaccine, you want to speak on that? I think, you know, one thing I understood finally, mm. 1.3 billion Indians, everyone is a politician in India. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is a politician. So I think we have a, something in our blood, unfortunately, the, the political mind of everywhere. Uh, but what is important is uh, the accuse, I'm not, I didn't look at it because I'm not belong to any political party. I belong to science, that's all. And I'm looking at the country, where the country has to stand out. That's all I'm interested in. I, I was not bothered what they call and what they claim and all that. That shows their ignorance and their uh, absolutely no idea what they're thinking. I, I think I would like to speak to you about your interaction with the Prime Minister because we've seen in COVID times how the Prime Minister has led from the front. And also he's been uh, very involved in this whole vaccine journey that the country has undertaken. So would you like to tell us about your interactions with the Prime Minister vis-a-vis -vis the development of the vaccine and when co-vaccine finally came in? So let me again, people don't interpret me that I belong to BGP and all that. No, no, but, no. of course, uh, they know, all know it was a political I, attack I, I, and I it wasn't say, directed at you anyways. I want to say professionally, with my statement, very underlying this professional statement. When a prime minister, when vaccine people talking about the regulatory was not even understood properly, mm. what type of regulatory system we should put in and make it happen. But prime minister took the journey of visiting the vaccine companies. That has opened up. So as a leader, when they come to our plan, that wakes up the entire system in the country. So he made the system to wake up, whether foreign embassies, whether it is a regulatory system, whether health ministry, everything has been activated. Okay? So I think that's a sign of a leadership of uh, showing that, yes, it has to be activated. No, uh, you think that the Indian innovation, the belief in that in Indian innovation was very, very important and the political belief in that Indian innovation, the government's uh, belief in that uh, in innovation was very important. I think uh, Prime Minister is uh, saying Atma Nirbhar program mm. is a true self-reliance and uh, we came into the picture in that game 
um, but otherwise we i believe in last 20 years only atman uh, nirbhar program right from the beginning as an entrepreneur uh, we even need to make it that's how we made a lot of innovative vaccine whether rota where typhoid conjugate first time in the world and we made the first vaccine in the world a typhoid conjugate we are saving children in pakistan zimbabwe myanmar zambia uh, and all those countries children so i think you know we been there as an atman nirbhar program even before now the prime minister came and it become reinforced this strategy no and i take great pride in saying this dr ella that we speak about the moderners and the pfizers of the world but we have our very own co vaccine here and it's competing with the vaccines in the world and i think that is that goes a long way in speaking about your journey as well dr ella i think you've been uh, you were outside outside india you stayed there you studied there but you wanted to make that journey back home and you always say that and i think in a lot of your interviews that it's very important to be here focusing on india working for india i think that uh, spirit also really helped in making that co vaccine for the country no i mean uh, see the western world chose the revolutionary technology which is mrna nothing wrong in it and uh, we chose the old technology nothing wrong again yes and uh, we believe world is gold our saying always there world is gold and world is the best so we cho- choose on the proven technology maybe less efficacious but then safety profile is extremely good and that is what is important citizen should not be affected of uh, having a vaccine if it doesn't protect 100% okay mm. but it should not uh, affect them the lifetime so we don't know what other vaccines are going to be lifetime what are the problems we can come or encounter the new technology we don't know already we are seeing this surfacing out a lot of things uh, but what is important is uh, i think we envisage this and we were committed as a company and my staff my work employees they were all 100% committed 24 hours they were all working 24 hours there was no shift system whenever they go for lunch and come back at sleep in the near the premise itself near the plant itself they were sleep okay so dr ella you are trying you are telling us that all the people who were working in your premise that time were not really working under any uh, hour system they were just there and they constantly there. working a constantly working now i i think that really calls for an applause for uh, dr ella and his team no, he's saying he worked round the clock no, to get no, us the no, co vaccine not, not so me, i think not me my side is his team my, yes my, my, absolutely not absolutely <laughs> and that's that is exactly why i say that uh, you've really worked hard your teams worked hard right. it's it was a taxing period for you as you said but you uh, and your team have made that sacrifice and that sacrifice now holds us in good stead sir we we are seeing that and now being the fourth country in the world who's made their own vaccine i think it's a moment of pride for us it really is moving on sir i think uh, now that many of us i think have taken co vaccine we've taken our double shot a lot of us uh, what about the co uh, the co vaccine for kids it's already got its approval when do you think it will roll out uh, that is uh, i mean we completed our process of clinical trial from 2 years to 18 years and we submitted data to the government mm. it is left to the government to do the necessity not my in my, not in my hand my job is over uh, but you you uh, co vaccine trials have been conducted on kids and i i, I think uh, um, most many of us in the audience would know this that the only vaccine that has conducted trials on kids which are as small as 2 years two old years. because no other vaccine in the world has done that i, I think that is also a It's big true. feat sir would you like to speak years. on that we are the lowest in the world probably the even pfizer vaccine is only above 5 years but we're two years onwards we are the only one so um, when the vaccine finally rolls out it will be given to kids as small as 2 could that be uh, i'm i'm not a policy maker <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a policy maker but your trials yeah. have done that trials clinical trial has done and i think will be publishing paper also so, so. it if if it is it can be administered it can be administered Absolutely. to kids as small as 2 years old it's a safe it's like injectable polio vaccine right and covid vaccine or covaxin is a very similar platform injectable polio vaccine has been used last uh, 35 years in the children's and i think it's a uh, common flat and 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 what about the nasal vaccines sir because you've been working on those as well and nasal we completed phase 2 trial now i think it's uh, going to be a lot of science is coming out a lot of new science which even uh, western world has not picked up the science that science we picked up now so that is one of the reason we are holding it confidential but i think uh, that is going to be stopping the transmission of the virus 
Right. Um, sir, uh, also, I think uh, when I was sitting in the audience waiting for our session to begin, a lot of people asked me to ask you this. What, uh, what with the new variants that are coming in? We're talking about the South African variant, we're talking about the, uh, the Botswana variant. Uh, this, these, uh, the future variants, will that be a variant for concern? I mean, um, I don't know why people are so much concerned about the variant. We I'm, ask all of these, uh, they've been asking I me think this I will, question. So. I'll, I'll tell them all of them. In this room, you're about two or three hundred, I mean, many, all the people, your human genome mm -hmm. at DNA level, 99.9999% same, all of us, 100 percent almost same, DNA level. Then why are we, each one is different? That means we are all, each one is a mutant in a way. The mutant is not at DNA level, but the, at a mutation is happening at RNA level, that means RNA and protein level. DNA level, if it happens, you will get a cancer, you will get other uh, uh, genetic diseases. So it doesn't happen that it happens in RNA. RNA level means when RNA produce, it can stable 20 minutes or it can be 20 hours. So that again protein can be 20 minutes to 2 hours. So that changes the physiochemical characters of the each individual. Intelligence, color, everything changes. So at a RNA and protein level is what the changes comes in, not at the DNA level. So we expect virus, at a RNA level, same thing as mutation is happening. Whatever the Botswana is happening, is a truly what is happening in immunocompromised patient. Immunocompromised patient means the virus multiplies very high. When virus multiplies high, there is a reassortment happens. A lot of reassortment happens in a virus. RNA viruses recombines easily. We call 10 to 4 of 7 recombination event it can happen between the viruses. And that is happening. Yeah, and then second question what the people have not asked so far, either WHO or anybody, is it an antiretroviral drug for HIV patient used in Africa, whether it is causing that problem of mutation? That second question is nobody asked yet. I think that should ask a relevant question of antiretroviral. Well, that is a, one of the message it gives us that any of the antiretroviral against COVID is introduced in India, well, that mutation also will come. We don't know yet. So I think we need to predict that uh, if any retroviral COVID drug is introduced in India, we have to be keep watching on the mutation that is, can happen. And it is expected a mutation, not a problem. Okay, um, Dr. Ella, uh, being the man out of all of us in this room, and in fact I should say in the country, who understands the virus more than anyone else in the country, I want to ask you on a very specific issue, sir. Do you think that uh, the viruses are being used as a means of bio-warfare, sir? Now, I am going to be putting you in a difficult spot. You'll have to answer that. Uh, I won't answer the straight question. Okay. But is it possible to do scientifically? Yes, it is possible scientifically. But I will not uh, say all other things. So I'll say only uh, scientifically is possible. Doable is easy to do. So you, you think that uh, there could be, it could be used as a means of warfare in the times to come? Or maybe it is being used even now? I mean, what, what has happened, I don't know. Hmm. But I can only, as a scientist, I can say, is it doable by us? I can do it also, if I want. But, or anybody can do it, any scientist can do it. It's not something impossible now, okay? So I think um, scientifically doable, uh, whether it's been done or not, I do not know. Yeah, because uh, we still do not know the origins of, of, of this virus. And we still, uh, there, there have been raging debates about how this virus originated and where, where were the origins. So that is precisely, why I ask you this question. So, uh, coming back to my question, you think that this could be, uh, I will not directly maybe speak about the COVID virus, but the, the viruses in current times could be an origin of bio-warfare. I'm asking this because we were just having a, a, a non-serious uh, kind of a casual chat. I mean, I, I can't comment on that. Hmm. But again, I re-emphasize, scientifically is doable, it is doable. It is doable. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ella, tell me, uh, what is the way forward from now? Because uh, as we see COVID and we see this pandemic, we see variants, we, we see mutation in the times to come. So, uh, is this going to be an ongoing uh, COVID fear? Or do you see a time when this all will settle in, there will be a finality to this? I don't think it will be a finality. Hmm. But uh, we get to used to with the COVID now. I think we are going to be uh, more friendly with them. <laughs> <laughs> the people who are not friendly, they're going to be affected more badly. <laughs> and I, I think uh, we have to live with them now. But I don't think it will be a more dangerous hereafter. Uh, you look at the contrast. In South Africa, the original strain that developed evaded the immunity, but not transmitted. 
not transmitted beyond South Africa. Right. Brazil, there was a 9P9 strain was there in Brazil, and that was lethal, mm. but not spread it widely. And coming to uh, Delta, it spread it very transmissibility very high, and also infectivity is very high. Mm. That's why you had more death in that. So now what the new variant is coming out, it may not be transmitted so fast. If it doesn't transmit, we don't have to be concerned about it. So, and even if it is uh, transmit, but I think today uh, we can come out quickly and answers, not, not a problem. So you don't, you don't see that as a fear? Not a fear. Uh, in you, the, in the you can make the same South African strain, replace with Wuhan strain as the manufacturing process, and get back into the vaccine next two months. So with a new strain, like a flu season, like a flu season, we can get back. So I think people should not be concerned about it. Now, we still follow our social practices and mask and all that because there's still virus spreads. You know, I always tell, you know, when Arnab asked me last time question, and the, the injectable vaccine only protects up to lower lung, hmm. not the upper lung. That's why even an injectable vaccine person will still show RT-PCR positive. Okay. But he will not get the death. You will get a symptom, you will get three, four days uh, fever, but you will be all right. He doesn't have to be hospitalized. Okay, that's I've been telling this injectable vaccine doesn't mean that you will not get infection, colonization of the virus. You will still have it. So because upper lung is not. This is where we are working on nasal. The nasal will protect the upper lung and lower lung. Hmm. So that takes care of a different game. So that is why the world is looking for na nasal. Because this is a COVID, is a respiratory pathogen. It goes in the front. Uh, it goes through here. So you need the mucosal immunity. We call mucosal mean from nose onwards to up to intestine. It's called mucosal. That entire mucosal where the immune system is produced. Entire immune system. That's why oral polio. We drink as a drop, the entire mucosal is get vaccinated. You take a flu mist, if you have a vaccine on nasal, it, uh, all the nasal is protected. So I think the nasal is going to an important game if you want to protect the upper lung, where you will get uh, transmission stops. Okay, uh, Dr. Ella, uh, your, the, the very name of your company is, it's called Bharat Bio Biotech. You speak about it, it holds Bharat with great esteem, with great pride, and all of us do. So, I, I think the very manufacturing of co-vaccine and the way, uh, as I said earlier, we've been the fourth country to produce our very own vaccine. Um, as we say, the India Economic Summit, Republic Summit, we say all geared up. You think India is very, is all geared up it's all, it's right there at the global pedestal when it comes to uh, pharma, when it comes to uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing, because you've, you've uh, given an answer to the world that India can do it, and you've made us all proud. That's why I asked this. I think India, to be frank with you, if we change a little bit our regulatory process a little bit faster in the mm. track, we are ahead of any other country in the world. Honestly, I'm telling you, vaccine is the only field. Uh, we are on par or ahead of any other country in the world. Even ahead of Europe also, ahead of US also. But many people doesn't understand that. That's, that that's they don't great. understand that. Compared to pharma, pharma is a more of a generic. Hmm. Okay? Vaccine is not a generic. Vaccine is a new drug molecules. So when it comes to that field, uh, I think we are ahead of the game. And I think uh, people doesn't realize that. But uh, we are ahead of the game. I think we got little delayed in the COVID time. But I think uh, it will catch up very fast. No, I don't think we'll be far behind anymore any countries in the world. Yeah, but when you say the delay, um, I don't really think we can compare this journey to the other, uh, uh, the, the Moderna or the Pfizer's. I say this because they have a huge uh, um, uh, financial support. You, you didn't really have that and you began this journey and you've, you've, you've emerged as a winner at the end of it. No, I mean, um, see, it's not the finance alone hmm. uh, works in a vaccine field. You need a strong commitment from, from top management level and also political commitment. Both should be required. Absolutely. Both are required. And um, look at it, um, the, the, uh, the vaccine uh, requires both the political commitment and uh, entrepreneur commitment. If both are there, I think we'll be ahead of the game. And, uh, you know, like for example, the Western country, they didn't do animal trial. They went to the phase one clinical trial directly. Had I gone in India like that, they would have criticized and a 100 PAL case would have been that, in the that's Supreme Court. That's a big Court, thing you say. Absolutely, humans are I used agree with you. Humans are used as a <laughs> guinea pigs in India. So, but, but that's a government took a decision in US. Mm -hmm. They said, we want a pandemic, we want to move directly into phase one to human trial. And they took the decision. There's nothing wrong in it. 
and I think uh, uh, the, the government, I mean, government can do that type of decisions. Um, a few uh, sessions earlier than yours, uh, I think the Honourable Minister Ardeep Puri was here and he, was, he spoke about the number, the 120 crore we've reached. So it's complete 120 crores that we've reached. So it's, it's, the numbers are swelling, they are, they are growing every day. And I think uh, the very uh, confidence in the Swadeshi vaccine, the vaccines that made at home, that's made, at, in, made in India, I think is, is adding to those numbers. So, so that the pride that we all take in that vaccine, and I've already spoken to you about it. Uh, how do you see that when people meet you? And I want to ask you this: when people meet you and they say they see you as a hero who's who's made this vaccine for for the country and for for the for Indians, how, how does that feel? I mean, um, at least scientists are recognized in India now. <laughs> at least Arnab recognizes the scientists now. <laughs> so I think. Uh, not only Shah Rukh Khan and others. No, so, no, no. You're way beyond Shah. Uh, You're way beyond all I, the Bollywood think, stars, um, sir. No, I, no, it's not for me. I'm a little old now. But uh, this is recognized for the young generation of uh, scientists. Mm -hmm. I want to get inspiration for the young scientists of this country. And that's very important. They also should feel that if I do good science, I'll also be recognized. That's the inspiration I want this country to take forward. So true, so true. And when you say this, when you say this, uh, I think it's also inspiring the so many scientists who've, as I said, uh, who may be uh, Indians who are outside the country, who are studying or who are wanting to go out. And as you always say that it's, uh, this is where you belong. You, you should work for, for the country, work for India as you came back. And you, you always uh, stressed on that fact that uh, use it for the country, use it for, for India. So I think that is clearly the message you would want to give out to the next generations to come? That's a very good question, Sucharita. I'll tell you why. Now, the, when, um, you know, the Indians who are living in US want to come back, this is the right time to, for them. The reason is, one, the political system has changed, the regulatory system is changing, and now private equity and funding available. So I think every ecosystem is now well created now in the country right now. To be frank with you, that has shown that COVID vaccines, strategy, production of game, of India's ahead of the game, all that given a confidence to the private equity and financial world. I think a lot of people will come now. A lot of people will come and they'll start the companies. A lot of people will come and I, I, I was told that uh, Dr. Bagai wanted to ask you a question if, uh, if Dr. Bagai is here in the audience. I. Okay, I I think a lot of doctors uh, are 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 wanting to know this because uh, they are the ones who've been meeting the patients directly. The, the patient interface has been with the doctors, so you've been making the vaccine, but the the, the doctors have ha having to do all the explanation to the patients. So now, if I were to tell you to directly tell. Uh, people who've been taking the vaccine, if you were to promote your own vaccine to them, how would you do that? How would you tell them that this is, this is uh, the lifesaver for you? I mean, I'm not a good marketing guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good, I'm a only scientist. I'm not a good marketing guy. So maybe people like you who are required in my company. You will hire me? <laughs> you will, you can hire me. Yes, I'll take and your you, you permission of one I, You can hire me if you will allow me to be hired by you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but doc, uh, Dr. Ella, it's, it's I think science. We should talk incredible. science. We should talk science. We did one thing. We have a 400 people marketing team in the country. I think we are the largest uh, private marketing uh, company to beat the multinationals in India. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you honestly, we, we have, what we did with the doctors, we never talked about the price. Mm -hmm. We only talked about science. Science, what type of publication, what type of science we have done, how we have done trials in 25 countries in the world. We have 150 publications, we have patterns. That's how we talked about it. Today, I think we are standing out well with the private practitioners in mm -hmm. the country. Um, we really stand out. So, I mean, it took a long time, 10 years of journey, for us to create that impression in the doctor's mind. Mm -hmm. And I think doctors are very helpful today to Indian companies. They're very predisposed better to Indian companies. Right, because uh, I think, uh, let me put it this way, a few, uh, few of the questions that are asked when uh, people get the jab is, is, is this, that why is Covaxin relatively more expensive than uh, Covishield? Or, this, is, this is a question that is often asked. So uh, instead of the doctors ask, uh, answering it, why don't you answer it? Sure, I mean, I mean, I'm I fully justified that mm. question. I'm telling you honestly, we didn't take any money from the government of India, honestly. We developed everything from ourselves, entire technology, we, we have not borrowed any money, we put all our money, everything, we took the risk, moved the project. 
and we given government of india at a very 200 rupees a dose to government of india so what we are trying to to recover a little bit cost from the private practicing that's all is not that the expensive vaccine and i'm telling private practicing in the, it is not to happen in the, uh, us yet it's still government supplies in india they allowed the private practice we try to recover a little bit money and i'm telling i swear i'm telling you i have not taken any dividend no, I in my you. i have not taken a dividend in the company hmm. okay i'm putting all my money back into rd so every vaccine development chickengunya i didn't take any money zika i didn't take any money from the government all i developed everything on our own we are developing now new generation flu vaccine I have not taken any money in new generation flu vaccine. I am developing everything on our own. So I am trying to see some money can be mobilized, can be put in for R&D, nothing else. That again speaks volumes of your work, sir, because I think uh, you are doing it for the country and you are putting all that money back into the country because uh, that, is, that is the way forward. And I think you would, uh, you would say that to uh, your uh, fellow uh, colleagues who are working on the field as well, as in uh, the other companies who are working on vaccines and uh, working in the similar field? I mean, I don't know. So, I, <laughs> so as long as I'm alive, either my son will do that or I don't know, but at least I will do what I'm doing. No, and you're doing it with, <laughs> with great alliance, sir, because uh, the way we are seeing it, and as I said, so many of us are part of the co-vaccine club already. So we hold it as a badge of pride that we are, we've, we've taken the Swadeshi, the Made in India vaccine. And... Uh, uh, I, I would just, I just want to ask you about this whole, uh, the thing that you said right at the beginning. Is there, is there a kind of uh, a global bullying that you see when it comes to uh, taking your product, the Indian product, into the global markets? I mean, um, you look at it, uh, the, when a nuclear, somebody develops a nuclear, some other country will try to stop. Mm. I think these sort of things, the geopolitics is expected, yeah. is something... Uh, not that uh, this is expected. When you have a national calamities happening in the globally, when an economy is affected, you know, they would like to have, each one want to have a supremacy over others. That is expected in a technology platform. So I think we should not worry about it. So did you... We prepare ourselves for better. You think you, you faced it at some point of time? I mean, we face everyday problems, so... so this, this is, is part, one more problem. part of the problems of the that problem. come your way. You take them in your That's stride. All. And, and I, I, if you start looking at the, all the negative stories, then we will never survive in this country at all. So we have to ignore 99% of all the negativity, move on positive thinking and move on. That's it. Such a life lesson, sir. So much to learn. Because as you said, let's not focus on the negativity. There's too much of it. So you need to keep that on the corner and move ahead. And that's, that's the way you, that's the path you've taken, Absolutely. I think, in this entire journey of, of, of co-vaccine. And... Uh, I, I also feel, sir, that uh, now that you've been working on the vaccine for kids and we're working, we're waiting for a rollout, uh, which is uh, going to be expected sometime soon, uh, you think that uh, this will ease out a lot of stress that I think a lot of people are facing because they feel that they've been vaccinated, but what about their kids? They are still going, to, and, and, and I think the last two years, a lot of us have witnessed that, that the last two years, we've, we've, we're not really seeing our kids go out. They've, they've been co cocooned in homes because uh, there is this constant fear of COVID. So you think that once the children's vaccine is going to roll out, that fear will settle down and we can resume a normal life that, that I think pre-COVID we were witnessing. I mean, uh, children are tired with the mom and dad also now. <laughs> <laughs> they are also tired seeing the mom and dad in the home for 24 hours. So I think, uh, I think it is required. It's a government policy issue. So mm. we need to wait and see what the government policy is. Mm. And but, but you think that this is, uh, this is going to be the way forward because once the children take the jab and the parents have already been doubly vaccinated, it, it, it's going to be a normal course? At least, at least they should immediately, you know, release in the urban market at least. Hmm. In urban situations, most children are affected in urban situations. Because many families are working families. Right. So their children has to go to school. I think that is the priority for the children. Okay. Uh, I think there's an audience question. Uh, I think the gentleman there wants to ask a question. If you can pass on the mic. Hi, sir. Good evening. My name is uh, Rahul Kishore. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, you saved my family, my wife and my mother especially. Uh, thank you for the vaccine. I just wanted to know, there was so much of, you know, uh, Joomla vaccine and Pani Bharawa and it's not been tested, there are no trials, all that happening. 
you are making the vaccine. How do you deal with these dark days? Do you want to just throw it all away? How did you get up every day and say, I've got to fight this? Because there was a huge, huge amount of propaganda which went around and they almost sort of killed the vaccine for lack of a better word. I mean, we have gone through quite a bit of um, animosity. Uh, it's uncalled for. Uh, uh, to be frank with you, if they don't like it, they don't want to take a vaccine, they're welcome. But uh, so much of negativity, uh, again, it's a political party. They want to use that political party's on us. <laughs> so they're used as a sort of, a, no, nothing should be made a success in Atman Nirbar program, sort of a game plan. And I think, you know, it's expected in the part of the democracy in this country, we have to take everything. But if we are not a mature democracy, that's a problem. U.S. is also democratic, but when somebody talks about it, there's some responsibility for it. They take the ownership of that. That is not there in this country. But I know, uh, water has shown now the results. <laughs> okay, the lady here. Good evening, Dr. Ella. First of all, I'd like to thank you. Uh, my question to you would be, we are seeing that in the US, uh, booster doses are being rolled out now, whereas we are still, uh, you know, we have not completed second doses for most of the population. Uh, by when do we expect a booster dose? Do we expect a booster dose for Covaxin? If yes, by when do we expect it? Do we wait for the complete vaccine, uh, second dose vaccination or will it be rolled out before that? Thank you. I, I'm not a policy maker. I'm only a producer, so I can't really comment. But I'll give you an indirect answer to you. Child, given three dose vaccine. First dose, zero. For second dose, one month. Third dose, sixth month. Okay? The sixth month, what you give a third dose is a miracle dose in a child. That gives lifetime immunity. Third dose. Third dose gives a lifetime immunity, not the first and second. Okay? So you go by that logic of uh, world science. Uh, booster may be required, but today the disease burden is very low. We are not able to see. My feeling is the, the virus load has come down in the country. So we'll wait and watch. I think the government is also watching. And enough supplies are also there now, not a problem. And we have to, I think the government has to take a right decision as appropriate. I think that's more than an, in, that's more than an indication, sir. The miracle dose is important, he says. Uh, yeah, yeah, the gen. Yeah. Saurabh Shukla. Hi, sir. Saurabh. Good evening. I am Saurabh Shukla. I am founder and editor in chief of News Mobile. I am also a Republic partner. So just like you have a Swadeshi company, I run a Swadeshi mobile media network and I'm sure our challenges sometimes are the same. I just want to know, sir, two quick questions. A lot of people are wondering, what is the chance of a fourth wave in India and can vaccination prevent it? And the other quick question, do you see a Western bias? Because when it comes to, you know, I don't need to, uh, need to name the global body. When it came to the Chinese vaccine, they got a fast track approval, but yours took so much longer. I think I, want, I don't want to comment anything. <laughs> no, but what, 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 what's your gut feeling? I'm not asking you to comment as, you know, obviously, uh, as a company, but what, what, what really went wrong? Where do we need to work? Do, we, do you think that we need to mobilize uh, global diplomacy more when it comes to we the need, health? That's a good question. And yeah. that is a, your, your question itself is an answer. And I think uh, we need to increase our strength of in WHO and other places. And our embassies are activated now. Good, I think, good direction is going on right now. And I think it's happening now. What about the fourth wave, sir? Hmm? Do you think a fourth, fourth wave? wave? <laughs> fourth wave. I mean, you look at it, where the countries where the high number of vaccine is available. US, Europe has got too much vaccine. And why is it coming third wave, fourth wave is coming there, when you have so much of vaccine there? Okay? So where, uh, where the shield is what he's saying. <laughs> Take so I'm giving a logic uh, to think uh, in that direction. And it is coming there. That means, uh, one, is the age of the population is high. Number two, winter, circling around in the house. Second. And third is the platform technology waning down very fast. So they need a booster. Now the government has put neck, so they can't take it out. So, so it is all complex situations. Okay? Look at Africa. Hardly 5% five, uh, five is vaccinated. 5% or 6% is vaccinated. And this is burden, the lowest disease burden in Africa. Okay? So very surprising contrast between the two continents. And I think, we need, I think that is giving a lot of science to us, particularly for our molecular virologists. We are looking at those things very strategically, uh, how to position those games. Okay? 
So we'll come back on this a little bit. Thank you. So as Dr. Ella says, I think stay, uh, take co stay co vaccinated, take the miracle dose, and you'll be taken care of. You'll be taken care of. Another, okay, one yeah. last question. So, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Ella. My name is Kapil Madan. I'm a lawyer practicing at the Supreme Court. So, I have a question for you. So, we've been, you know, recently receiving reports that there's a new variant that is coming from South Africa, and some instances have been found in Hong Kong. You explained during your talk that, I mean, everyone is different, and as such, the virus is different. So, I wanted to ask you the vaccine composition that we already have. Does that good enough to prepare and guard ourselves for any future, you know, uh, mutations that we, the trend that we are seeing, or is there anything, you know, we need to be uh, alarmed of, or we need to prepare differently in so far as the composition is concerned? Kapil, there is a good question. A last simple answer. Okay, spike protein this much. Okay, this virus is total chair. Which one will eat more? A virus will we eat more? The spike, am I right? Short, small. So you have a mutations happening in this region, not the entire virus gene. So when you have a live virus like inactivated virus we are using, it has got other regions like nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein is a 35% of the virus component is a nucleoprotein. That also works as a vaccine. Nucleoprotein also is a good vaccine candidate. Okay? But nobody is exploiting as a nuclear protein itself. But we are using the inactivated vaccine. The nuclear protein is a place where the mutation is very rarely is happening. One, we had the South African Botswana, only one mutation in the nuclear protein. Whereas in spike protein, 32 mutation, 32 amino acid changed. Okay? So that is a scary part. Right now that so many amino acids changing in a spike region is a dangerous sign. We need to be watching. But my gut feeling is, you have so much mutation, the transmissibility will be less. If the transmissibility less, then the likely of spreading the virus to other areas, unlikely. But again, I may be wrong after some time. We know the, how the mutation is having an impact. But we'll know it soon. Thank you. Dr. Ella, thank you so much for speaking to us today, for speaking about your vaccine journey, and not just for taking us time, take, taking our time for the Republic Summit, but for taking out months of that, of, of that incredible journey which gave us our very own Swadeshi Tika. Thank you so Thank much, you. Dr. Ella. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sucharita and Dr. Ella. And more power to you, Dr. Ella, to keep creating innovative vaccines and biotheoreptics.